In the previous tutorial we have used YOLO V5 OBB to do inference using CPU. But for real life application, to maximize performance of the YOLO, GPU should be used. In this tutorial, we will do some modifications in the code to make YOLO V5 OBB run using GPU, and we will also train YOLO to do inference on custom classes. Finally, we will create a very simple application using YOLO V5 OBB. In this application, we will make the camera rotate by the angle that was detected by YOLO OBB so that the camera aligns with hand pointing direction. We will begin this tutorial from installing an annotation tool which we will use to create training data. Firstly, install Python 3 pip. PIP is a package management system used to install and manage software packages written in Python. Next, install the PyQkey 5 DevTools package. This package contains various support tools for PyQkey 5 developers, such as user interface compiler and resource file generator. Install LXML. LXML is a library for processing XML and HTML in Python. Now we are going to set up annotation tool. We will use this label image to repository. Thanks for the authors for sharing this great work. On this page we can find instructions on how to install and use this tool. Clone the repository. Before annotation, we have to create a label. Move to the data directory which is inside the label image 2 folder. Open the predefined classes text file. Add hand label on the top of the labels list. Now go back to the label image 2 folder and open a terminal. Execute the label image pi script. From the file menu, Click on the Open Deer button. Select a directory in which you have images to annotate and click the Open button. Select a rotated rectangle button. Firstly, draw a small rectangle using the left button of the mouse. Then, using the right button, rotate it to desired rotation angle. We can move rectangle itself when the cursor is on the rectangle. And we can alter vertices length or rotate it when the cursor is on the vertex of the rectangle. When changing length of sides and rotation angle, try to fit your object inside the rectangle as precisely as possible. Once you are satisfied with annotation, press Ctrl and S keys to save the annotation file. The annotation file will be saved in the same directory with the images. As we can see, the annotation file contains center coordinates of the rectangle, length of the sides and rotation angle. We have to do this procedure for all images we will use for training. After we have created a data set, we still have one thing to do. As has been described in YOLO v5 OBB repository, the annotation format should be represented by coordinate of each vertices, category and difficulty. To do the conversion, we will use the script in this repository. So, clone this repository. Execute the voc to YOLO v5 OBB Pi script. Note that we have to specify the directory of XML files we want to convert in the file of class names. If the conversion goes successfully, text files will be generated. As we can see, it follows the format required by YOLO v5 OBB. In the previous tutorial we installed YOLO v5 OBB using CPU, 
but in this tutorial, we will use GPU. As I have described in the previous tutorial, for the installation, we should execute this command. So, let's do this. As we can see, an error emerges. This error is discussed on several forums including this one. It seems that in recent PyTorch versions, THE headers are deprecated. Let's see what modifications we should do to fix this error. The left code is an original code, and the right code is a new one. We have to include these five header files. Auden is the foundational tensor and mathematical operation library on which everything else is built. Now let's try to install it one more time. We still have an error. This time it seems that we have several undefined functions and statements. This happens because function names and Auten are different from those in THC. This is explained in this page. We can find that, for example, the h sealed diff should be changed to that sealed diff. Functions such as th cuda check and th cuda malloc are also mentioned here. So we can use this information to fix our code. Let's see what modifications we have made in the poly nms cuda code. Firstly, in line 214, we have to replace th sealed div with that sealed div. Secondly, th cuda malloc is replaced with raw alloc. CUDA caching allocator performs memory allocation using the CUDA memory allocator. Memory is allocated to a given device in the stream. Thirdly, replace TH CUDA check with C10 CUDA check. Fourthly, replace TH CUDA free with raw delete. Now let's execute the installation command once again. We have successfully installed YOLO OBB. Now let's execute inference script. Execute the detect pi script. Note that unlike previous tutorial, we will specify zero for device argument. This means that we will use GPU number zero. Other arguments remain the same. we get a runtime error. This message says that we are trying to do calculations using tensors defined using GPU and CPU, which is prohibited. Let's check the code. The problem seems to be in the NMS rotated wrapper pi script. Here is the line where the error occurs. But the problem actually lies in the line above. Here tensor is specified using CPU whereas we specified GPU as an execution device, so we should fix this problem. To fix this problem we should modify three files. Detect Pi script, General Pi script and NMS rotated wrapper Pi script. Let's see what modifications we have made. On the left side we have the original code and on the right side we have modified code. We should modify the non-max suppression OBB function. We modify it to take device type as an argument. In the general Pi script, we modify non-max suppression OBB function definition and also modify OBB NMS function to take device type as an argument. Finally, in the OBB NMS function, we are modifying function definition and also modifying torture range statement to take device type. Now we are ready to execute the inference task. Open a new terminal and execute the detect pi script. Note that in the previous tutorial we specified CPU as a device. 
but this time we are specifying 0 which means that we will use GPU number 0. After inference is done, we can see results in the runs folder. As we can see, inference is successful. Before executing training, we should place our training data properly. In the dataset folder we have a hand data folder. The hand data folder contains training data and data for validation. Both of these folders have the same structure. In the training folder we have an images folder and a label text folder. In the images folder we have images for training. In the label text folder we have annotation files. Note that name of images and corresponding annotation files should be the same. In the training data yum file, we specify a relative directory to the train folder and validation folder. Even though we will train only one class, it is said that training process is more stable when there are more than two classes. So, here we have added the class background as a dummy class. To do training, we should run the training pi script. When running this script, we should specify weight file, dataset, hyperparameter file, batch size, device type and image size. This time we set batch size 4 and epoch number 80, but these figures vary depending on your GPU specification and data size. After the training is complete, move to the folder where the results are saved. Copy the best PT file and move it to the YOLO v5 OBB folder. In this tutorial we already did this. And we have renamed this file to best hand PT file. Now run detect pi script. After inference is done, move to the folder where the results are saved. The hand is successfully recognized. We need to install one more library before moving to the next step. Install Dynamixel SDK. This package provides Dynamixel control functions using packet communication. Now let's see the code to move a servo in direction in which hand is posing. This code is based on the detect pi script, so I will explain mainly about servo operation related things. In this line we are converting inference results from tensor to the numpy array. Here we are extracting bounding box angle. Note that result comes in 5 parameter representation so the angle is the fifth parameter. If there are no results, we reinitialize bounding box angle. Here, difference between servo angle and bounding box angle is calculated. We set the limit for difference because if the servo moves too fast, it will cause negative effect for inference. Here servo angle is calculated based on current servo angle and difference. Here target servo angle is sent to the servo. Now open a new terminal. Before executing the Python script, we should set permission so that the servo can access the USB port. Execute the detect servo pi script. Note that we should set 0 for source argument because we are using USB camera. Even though recognition precision is not great, we can see that servo rotates to the hand pointing direction.